Kanji used to be a normal child with normal goals and ambitions, who used to spend his time playing outside and having fun, but one day, his sister contracted cancer and ended up being hospitalized because of this. For months, he saw her in a bad state in the hospital, with doctors and nurses rushing around, taking blood samples, but they all came back with the same conclusion that not enough has been researched about this kind of cancer, and that's why there is no way to heal her, as there is no medicine or treatment for it. Because of this unfortunate state of medical science in his country, his sister ended up paying the price and wasn't able to survive. Ever since that day, he was completely changed as instead of playing games and wanting to make friends, he got obsessed with medicine and vowed to himself that he would become the greatest pharmacist and find a cure for cancer. Several years have passed and he ended up completing his PhD at a very young age, becoming a well-known scientist in his field, but he would still stay in the laboratory, writing research articles, hardly sleeping or eating anything, and completely ruining his health in this way. One day, after one such hard-working day, he decides to take a small 40-minute nap, but he never wakes up from the nap and ends up dying from exhaustion. He ends up getting transported to another world, where, when he opens his eyes, he sees a small girl in front of him. He wakes up and looks around to find himself in a totally different environment. He goes over to watch outside the window, but realizes that he is still very weak. The girl screams at him to stay in bed, as according to her, he ended up getting struck by lightning and was in a small coma. He immediately realizes that he must have died from all the overexertion and has now been teleported to another world. He tells the girl that he seemed to have lost a bunch of memories, so she brings out a mirror for him to look at himself. He's in the body of a young blonde boy named Pharma, who seems to be from a very rich aristocratic family. The girl introduces herself as Lot, who is supposed to be her attendant. He asks her whether she could remove her bandages, as his body seems to be tingling, and she immediately goes off to get some warm water. They start removing his bandages when she spots a design on his right arm and immediately starts looking at it. The design seems to have been made in the shape of lightning, and she immediately starts praying in front of it, claiming it to be the sign of the god of medicine. When he tells her that he doesn't know what she is talking about, she becomes horrified, telling him that the god of medicine is the god that their family worships. He decides that he needs to gain more information about this new world, so he asks her to show her around and tell him some basic things, because his memory seems a bit fuzzy. She takes him to the hall and explains that their entire family has been the royal pharmacist for generations and has been raised to the power of Artchukes, which is second only to the king. She shows him some portraits, while explaining that he has a father, a mother, a younger sister, and an older brother who has gone abroad to finish his studies. She tells him that their family is very well respected, not only as pharmacists, but also as great magic users. Pharma gets a bit excited and asks her whether he can even perform magic, which scares Lot, who asks whether he doesn't remember how to do it. He replies honestly that he doesn't, which sends her into a frenzy, as she tells her not to tell this to anyone else, as performing magic is what separates the nobles from the peasants. She tells him that he used to be a water magic user and was very good at it, before telling him to try and remember how to do magic. He goes back to his room and sits on the bed, thinking how he can even begin practicing but thinks about the chemical composition of water, and after thinking about the molecular structure, suddenly, he feels something moving and water starts forming from his hands. He quickly rushes to the window and ends up blasting a lot of water in the garden while trying to stop. He is finally able to stop the flow and is exhausted by the end of it. Lot, who was in the garden, gets excited to see that he remembers to use magic and rushes upstairs. By that time, he tries to think about different molecular compositions and finds out that he can create complex compound things if he knows about their molecular structure. She comes upstairs and asks him whether he also forgot all the medicinal knowledge that he had and takes him into a library. She tells him that this is his personal library and he has memorized every single book inside this area, which surprises him as these are a lot of books. He picks up a random book and starts reading it, realizing that he still seems to have some memories of this boy as he remembers what was inside the book even though it is his first time seeing this. He is then called for dinner, but before going, she tells him to be careful, as his father tends to randomly ask questions in the middle of the dinner to test his retention, and with that bit of information, he goes over to have dinner. He spots his mother and sister looking kind of worried, while an imposing man is sitting in the middle. His father says that he is glad about his recovery, and while in the middle of dinner, he ends up asking him a medicinal question. I swear to God, if this were my father, I would have let Truck Kun Ishikai me back to the normal world. Thankfully, he's able to answer him correctly, which silences his father for a while, and he tells Pharma that he wants him to start taking his magic classes tomorrow, which he agrees upon. The next day, he goes down and meets his teacher, whose name is Elin. She seems suspicious of him and tells him that he seems very different and not like the Pharma she knew. She tells him that she knows his memory is fuzzy and tells him that she is his father's top student and his teacher. 
She then asks him whether he remembers magic, to which he replies that he doesn't really know. She tells him that they are going to have a revision class today. She explains to him the classic stuff, about how there are a couple of elements including fire, water, air, and earth, and you can make a bunch of new shit with it. She takes him to the banks and asks him whether he brought his wand, and he asks whether she is talking about the one in his pants, but she says that she is talking about the one which is not below average. He remembers that he saw a wand inside of his room on the wall, thought it was a decorative piece. She sighs and produces her own wand, which is pretty huge, which making me think that she is from Thailand, but I digress. She hands her huge wand into his hands and tells him to use it to produce basic water fountain magic. He seems to be confused and says that he doesn't remember how it looks, so she takes the wand out of his hands and goes over to the bank, telling him to look closely, as she is about to demonstrate it once. She simply goes ahead and creates a fountain from her staff, which he is impressed by. He will be very impressed by me as I create a bunch of waterless fountains with my staff at night. She then walks to him and hands the staff over to him, telling him to replicate. What a crappy teacher, she didn't even explain what or how she did it. Anyways, Pharma is a giga chat and goes over near the bank and ends up producing a fountain big enough to rival my nightly fountains, which shocks her to the core as she falls over. She rushes over to him checking whether he is okay, and tells him that each person has a set amount of mana that they can use and she is scared that he ended up using all of his. She rushes back to get a smaller staff out of her bag and tells him to grip it tightly. He seems to be very experienced in gripping wands, and it turns out that it was some sort of a meter to measure mana, and the wand ends up breaking, which totally shocks her. She tells him that this has never happened in their world before and pulls his sleeve up to see the tattoo that God ended up making on his arm, and is again surprised to see it glowing. Pharma brushes it off, but she tells him that this is not some random mark, this is the God of Medicine's gang sign. She tells him that he is to never grab a mana measuring wand in front of anyone, not even his own father, and they end up stopping the lessons for the day. On their way back, they end up sitting on a bench, and while playing around, he realizes that he is able to see if anyone has any medical problem, if he focuses. He notices that Ellen's finger is looking blue when he focuses, and she reveals that he is right, as she ended up hurting it this morning. But this ends up freaking her out even more, as she stumbles back, saying that it is fame to be the ability possessed by the god of medicine as well, and tells him not to kill her, before running away into the bushes. What a crazy thought. The next day, he wakes up, and his father calls him to let him know that Aelin has got a high fever and she has declared that she doesn't think she will be able to tutor you anymore, which is very weird. He also gives him a bunch of medicines and a short note telling him to deliver it to her, and give his regards to her. He goes over to the Thoughts Mansion, which is insanely big as well, and waits around in the room remembering how scared she was yesterday, when the main door to the hall opens, and a terrified-looking Ellen emerges from it, wearing full-body armor and asking him not to kill her, as she is never going to tell on him ever. He tries to calm her down and shows that he doesn't even have his wand, which puts her at ease just a little bit, as she removes her face mask, but still stands at the door. She asks him why is he here, and he replies that his father sent him here to deliver the medicine for her, and that is it. She comes inside but gets scared again by the thought that Pharma might have poisoned the medicine, but he reassures her that he has done nothing of that sort. He then hands her some of the medicine that he ended up creating with the knowledge of modern science and an ointment to apply, which again scares her thinking that these must be poisoned. He tells her that he has no intentions of harming her so she can be at ease and tells her that he still wants her to be his tutor. She retorts by saying that he doesn't even need to learn anything as he is literally the reincarnation of the god of medicine himself, but he tells her that he still wants her. She immediately bows down and tells him that if that is what god wishes, then she will follow. He honestly tells her that he has no idea about magic in this world, and that he doesn't think that he is God. He walks up to her and tells her that he needs her help, as the entire library has no material on magic, as it is filled with medicinal books, and even if he has some extra magical abilities, he has no idea how to harness and control them so she should teach him how to do it. He then hands her a bunch of pretty-looking flowers, telling her that if she doesn't become his tutor, he will take his flowers back and then leaves her place. The next day, while wandering around in the garden, he is approached by Ellen, who is again clad in armor, but seems more relaxed. She tells him that his magic is too strong and she needs to take precautions till she knows he can handle it safely. She thanks him for his medication and claims that even his dad's medications never worked this fast and his medicines seem more like a miracle. She also tells him that she has decided to tutor him, and tells him that they are going to an abandoned island because if anything goes wrong, it won't harm anyone. They reach the island where they spend the entire day training and learning new magic spells and even mixing up different elements. She tells him that he is learning surprisingly quickly, and should master these spells in no time before returning back to the mainland. 
After that, he sits around in the staircase, watching his servants like a total creep, but seems to also be taking notes. He keeps using his magic eye ability and notes down all the ailments of his servants, as well as what this ability can and cannot do. Finally, after looking at every servant, he ends up looking at Lot, and it turns out she is also having problems with dry skin on her hands that is developing scabs. He ends up going to his room, where he ends up creating a medicine for Lot's hands by using his modern knowledge of medical science. He creates a bunch of modern compounds and procures excellent modern medicine by using them. He then goes over and hands it over to Lot, telling her that this medicine should heal her hands, who is overjoyed to the point where she gets teary-eyed and asks whether she could share this with the other servants and her mom as well. He tells her that she doesn't have to worry as he has created a bunch of different medicines after looking at people's symptoms and goes with her to hand them over to each servant, who is overjoyed to the point where he doesn't understand why they are so happy. Lot looks at him and replies that this is because none of them have ever received medicine from them before. This confuses him, but she explains that there is a big divide between the nobles and the peasants, where peasants are not treated by nobles and even if they were, the fee would be so high that they would never be able to pay it. This saddens him and he pledges that he will make medicine accessible to the common people as well. The next day, he is called by his dad in the morning, and he goes inside the dining area to find his mom and his dad sitting around the table looking gloomy. He asks what's up, and they reply that his sister Blan has contracted chicken pox. He seems to be confused as on earth it isn't supposed to be a very deadly disease, but it turns out that here is very dangerous. He tells him that no one is allowed to go inside her room for three weeks, apart from some servants, just like what happened four years ago when Pharma ended up getting chicken pox. He tells him that he will keep that in mind and returns back to his room, where he starts thinking about the chemical composition of the drugs he has to make. He is not sure whether he would be able to create such a complex medicine, but after countless tries, he ends up succeeding and sneaks his way into her sister's bedroom, who seems to be pretty sick. She tells him that he is not supposed to be here, but he tells her to shut up as he has some crack for her. She refuses to eat pills because they are bitter, so he forces it down her gullet by hiding them in some macarons. After having the meds, she ends up asking him where he learned to make them, as their father said that there is no cure for this disease yet, but he ends up making an excuse about how he found it in a book that their dad hasn't read yet and tells her to keep it a secret. The next day, he goes over to her sister's room as her father inspects her, surprised as to how and why it got cured so quickly. Later in the evening, Pharma spends his time working on developing a simple microscope, when his father calls and tells him that he has been called by the royal capital for a visit. He seems to be really worried and starts coughing himself while trying to cover it up. Pharma suspects that his dad has some kind of lung problems as well, but hopes that his father has enough medicinal knowledge to treat on his own. His father tells him that this royal summon is directly from the queen, and that he cannot disclose the details to him yet, but he wants him to be there as his assistant, so he can learn how to deal with these problems and learn about the other nobles. They both take a carriage and after a while reach the royal capital, which seems to be bustling with people. They go directly inside the palace, where they meet up with a long-haired guy who greets them both and takes them inside a huge chamber filled with people who look worried. His dad asks what's the current condition of the queen, to which the ponytail guy responds negatively, but claiming that her condition seems to be beyond medicine. They go near the queen's bed and bow down, after which the queen reveals herself, looking like she already has one of her legs in the coffin. His dad goes over to the queen and starts taking her pulse before asking Pharma to bring over his bag, after which he takes her blood sample and performs some magical examinations. After that, they move over to the window, where they start looking at the queen's horoscope to decide whether she is going to live or die. Wow, what an amazing doctor. They check the stars, shake their heads as they realize that the stars aren't aligning and talk amongst themselves about how there is no way to save the queen and that she is going to die by tomorrow. His father goes over to the queen again and asks him to follow with some of the chemical from his bag, and Pharma realizes that he is trying to get the queen high on crack so she can be happy one last time before she dies. The queen straightforwardly asks him whether she is going to live, and he replies that the medicine is really strong and it should work, as he starts letting the queen take a fat rip from the ancient bomb. Pharma turns around as he starts hearing the court people begin to discuss how they are going to perform the funera, and he realizes that this is just a big ritual for euthanasia, and his father is just trying to ease the queen's way to death. Pharma feels bad and starts thinking that he should do something and uses his special ability to check what exactly is causing the queen problems, and is able to find out that the problem is in her lungs, and it could be either cancer or tuberculosis. After careful consideration of her symptoms, he is able to narrow it down to AIDS and realizes that in this time period, this disease was incurable, but with future medicine, he can cure the disease. Suddenly, the door opens and a little shit runs into the room crying and goes to the queen, telling her that he doesn't want her to die, and asking her never to leave him. 
She looks extremely sad, and that is when Pharma decides that he can't let her die. He moves forward, bowing in front of her, and asks for her permission to treat her ailment with a new medicine that he developed. All the court people immediately gasp at this, as his own father walks by his side and asks him about this nonsense. Farm still claims that he can treat the queen to which his dad scolds him not to speak if he doesn't know what he is dealing with, but the queen stops him, telling him that she will let Farmer try what he wants because he is the only one who is not trying to get her high. He thanks her and rushes out of the court and closes himself inside of a room and jams the door with his ice magic. He starts getting his stuff out of his bag when his father arrives and starts banging on the door, ordering him to open it this very instant, but he tries to concentrate and begins thinking about the compound that he will need to create the medicine. This would be a very complicated one, so he draws the chemical nature of the compound before imagining it and synthesizing it. Before he can do that, however, his father breaks through the door with his own magic and tells him to stop this foolishness. He tells Pharma that the disease is incurable, and he is just going to create more problems and pain for the queen. Pharma replies that the disease is not incurable, and that his father is just dumb as he believes in astrology just like any other dumb girl that I know of. He then turns around and starts synthesizing his medicine, but his father gets offended by his dislike for astrology just like any other dumb girl and tells him that this is actual science as well, before shooting an ice blast at him. Pharma turns around and by that time his father already has his wand raised just like me every morning, and tells him to answer what kind of miracle medicine he is talking about as without the knowledge that medicine is just poison. Pharma tells his dad to put away his erect wand, but just like my creepy uncle, he refuses and shoots more ice blasts at him. Pharma turns around and quickly uses a magic barrier to block the attack, which shocks his father to the core before erecting a giant ice wall in front of him. His father is shell-shocked as no one can use magic without a wand or without using incantations, and he asks Pharma who he really is as he is not his son. Pharma has no idea how to explain to his boomer father the concept of Ishikes, but his father ends up finding his diary, which is filled with Kama Sutra texts. He asks Pharma where he got this knowledge, and he replies that when he was in a coma, he had a dream and suddenly he knew everything about medicine and Kama Sutra. His father asks whether it was a revelation from the medicine god, but Pharma honestly replies that he has no idea. His father tells him that if he really got revelation from the god himself, then there is nothing he can do and he puts his wand back into his sheath unlike my creepy uncle. Pharma also shows some respect and evaporates the entire wall, shocking his dad once again as he thought Pharma's element was water. He starts synthesizing the medicine again and once completed, he takes it into the court again while wearing a face mask. He walks up to the queen and tells her that he has completed the medicine that the ailment she is suffering with is known as AIDS, which is caused by the queen being a freaky animal. And the treatment will be long term, as she will have to take the medicine every day for at least half a year. Before giving her the medicine, however, he walks over and shows her the bacteria in her blood through high makeshift microscope and explains the entire concept of bacteria and other pathogens to her. He then drinks one of the goblets to show that he isn't trying to poison her, and the queen drinks the oath goblet herself. All of the nobles gather around to have a look at the microscope and are amazed by the things they see, asking him what kind of magic this is. He then returns back to his mansion with his father and gives a bottle of booze and some crack to him as well, and tells him to have fun with the Kama Sutra. It has been some time now and both Pharma and his father has devised a routine to compare their Kama Sutra notes every morning and figure out whether they want to try out anything new. He is surprised at the knowledge that Pharma has and can only comprehend it as a blessing from the gods. It has been three months now since their house call for the queen of this kingdom and both Pharma and his father has devised a routine to compare their Kama Sutra notes every morning and figure out whether they want to try out anything new. He is surprised at the knowledge of different positions that Pharma has and can only comprehend it as a blessing from the gods. His father also tells him that he was recently approached by people from a medical college who wanted us to reveal the way to create these drugs, but Pharma immediately refuses, saying that as of now only he can create the blue meth. His father tells him that he doesn't need to worry, as he told the medical college people that they can never create the drugs, and he wants to monopolize the market by selling these drugs and being the sole producer. Pharma looks at his dad and tells him that his actual intentions are to release the recipe of this drug to the public so that the cure of AIDS can be made at every pharmaceutical shop, but the problem is that he is using his special abilities to create these drugs. His father gets serious, however, and tells him that now he is in the eyes of a lot of people, not only from the pharmaceutical sector, but also from the sex that hate the queen and should be very careful moving forward. He tells Pharma that he suspects someone intentionally facilitated the outbreak of AIDS inside of the royal palace, meaning that the queen got freaky with an enemy, which is very harem. Pharma, however, tells him that AIDS doesn't have any outright symptoms in the beginning, 
and whoever gave her the disease most probably doesn't know that he has it himself. His father is surprised at this piece of trivia, and asks him whether the god himself gave him a lecture about AIDS, but Pharma just replies that he uses the knowledge from the Kama Sutra in practice unlike his loser dad, before piecing out saying that he's going to clap the queen's cheeks, and he will be back later. He visits the palace, and while waiting outside the door of the queen's chambers, he is approached by a young guy who is the attendant of queen's failed abortion, and he asks Pharma whether there is anything that he would want from the queen. Pharma seems to be confused, but the guy tells him that he ended up curing the queen's illness, so obviously she's going to give him a reward, but Pharma says that he hasn't though about anything, and if they talk about his passion, then he would only want to open a pharmacy and sells as much crack as he wants to people. The door opens and he enters inside the room to do his regular checkup on the queen. He notes down any new symptoms and alters her dosage before telling her that her recovery seems to be going good, and in a couple months' time, she should be perfectly fine. The quitting laughs and tells him that she can't wait to get freaky again, A pharma clamjums her by saying that she needs to abstain for at least a couple of months or else the disease might end up recovering from its final stage. The queen seems to be taken aback by this piece of information, but promises that she will try to control herself as much as possible. The queen starts telling him that ever since she got inflicted with AIDS, her social status has plummeted massively, and no one respects her anymore. Pharma says that's what you get for being an easy ride, but then consoles her by saying that no matter what someone else says, she will always be needed by her son, who will always respect her. That's the biggest lie I have ever heard. He also says that a lot of simps also adore her, and will keep worshipping her till the day she dies. This makes the attention-seeking wench very happy, and she dismisses Pharma for the time being to flick her bean in peace. The next day, both he and his father are called to the royal court, and they both are totally pimped out. They enter the court to see it filled with a huge crowd of nobles, while the queen sits on her throne. She calls Pharma's father in front of her and starts talking a bunch of nonsense, thanking him for helping her in the state of distress, and then calls Pharma out from the crowd, who seems to be very surprised. He walks up to the queen timidly, and she puts her staff on his shoulders and praises him for his excellent service and for saving her life before giving him a badge and making him the royal pharmacist, just like his father. She then tells him that she is giving him her personal permission to open a pharmacy in the royal city, wherever he wants, and whenever he wants on a land of his choosing, delighting him with this news. The next day, a bunch of people arrive in his house asking an audience, and when he meets up with them, they explain that they are the royal carpenters, builders, and masons, who the queen has personally allotted to make sure the pharmacy is constructed as quickly as possible, and as beautifully as possible. Pharma responds by saying that he doesn't really have any particulars of how, when, and where he wants his pharmacy, and would need some time to decide, but the workers explain that they can't allow that, as if they return back to the palace without making the pharmacy, the queen will have their heads on a spike. Before he can even say anything, Ellen enters the room with her juicy personality and tells him that his dad ordered her to assist him in creating the pharmacy. Pharma replies that he wants to wander around and see some other pharmacies to get an idea of what he wants and what is needed, but the workers immediately tell him that they can't let that happen, as the queen will literally make sure their entire family never sees the sunlight again. After thinking for a while, Pharma finally decides on what he wants and grabs a pencil and a sheet before beginning to draw an incredibly precise layout of the pharmacy of his dreams. Some time passes, and the construction is going on pretty well, and now the contractor asks him whether he would want to name his pharmacy now. He thinks about it for a while before landing on the name Parallel World Pharmacy. He walks up to Ellen, and asks him whether the name would be too flashy as he wants it to be a very quiet affair and doesn't want any unwanted press, but she replies that the son of a noble aristocrat opening a medical shop is groundbreaking news, and obviously is going to get press whether he wants it or not. Before they can talk further, however, a fatty rolls over to them, claiming that he thought this was just a rumor as he looks at their shop. He looks at Pharma and tells him to bring out the owner of the shop, and Pharma tells him that he owns his mom every night before claiming to be the owner of the shop. Fatty claims that he is from a medicinal guild and asks him whether he wants to sell lollipops for kids or hard candies, because obviously he is not old enough to do anything else. Pharma replies by saying that Fatty's mom likes his lollipop quite a lot and she's her only customer. For others, he is going to sell actual pharmaceutical drugs. He asks Fatty whether he has to register at his guild to operate his shop, but the fat blob replies that their guild doesn't take in registrations from any nobles, but if he would beg him for the chance then, he might let him join. Pharma, however, rejects his offer, saying that he wants to work on his own and believes that he can do a better job than Fatty's entire guild by selling better medicine at cheaper rates. This enrages Fatty, who tells him that it is impossible for him to do so, but Ellen puts a stop to this 
by telling Fatty to back off before she loses her mind and makes a pot roast out of him, which scares Fatty so much that he simply runs away. Pharma goes inside of his shop and does some final inspections of the tools that he has and tells Elon that they will need someone to do accounts and deal with the money. At which point La tells him to consider her, as she can read, write, and likes to do math. What a monster! Pharma, however, doesn't want to give her a chance, as he is a total misogynist, and tells her that he will make her his errand girl because obviously as a girl she can't handle stuff like money, which is totally out of her brain power. The simple-minded Lot quickly agrees and walks away. He then turns to Ellen once again and tells her that they will have to find someone reliable who can handle their accounts with perfection. That evening he returns back to his mansion and finds all the servants, his sister and Lot in the hallway shedding tears that confuses him. He walks in and asks what's the matter, to which a person named Cedric responds, thanking him for his generosity all these years and explaining that he is retiring as the Pharma family accountant from today onwards and will probably live his life in peace around some farms, and that's what got all these people emotional. He claims that he has gotten really bad knees and taking that in consideration, Pharma's dad has decided to dismiss him. Pharma asks him whether he would still want to work, if he had better knees and Cedric nods his head, saying that he loves managing accounts. After hearing that, he runs away and goes inside of his father's chambers, asking him for the permission to employ Cedric as the accountant for his pharmacy. His father tells him that he dismissed Cedric so that Pharma can hire him and tells one of his servants to bring a giant chest that he gives Pharma as a gift for opening his shop. Pharma opens the chest and is shocked to see it filled with gold coins. I hate these trust fund kids. He tells Pharma to use this money carefully and make sure to take his pharmacy to new heights, which is not very hard when you have unlimited money, to be honest. It has been one month since the pharmacy has opened, but surprisingly enough, he rarely gets one customer in a couple of weeks, and the business has been garbage, which has started making Pharma lose confidence in himself. Ellen, however, reassures him that this was bound to happen, as the commoners usually go to the pharmacists and medics that are of common origin, and that they have been going to from a long time whereas the nobles and the aristocrats simply gets the pharmacists to make a house visit to get rid of any illness. He takes a big sigh as he has no idea why would people not try the new pharmacy once at least, but just then, Lot enters the room with a bunch of papers in her hand and claims that she went over the entire town and conducted a survey on common people about their perception of the new pharmacy, and she finally has the results. She starts listing the problems that people listed, with the first one being that there is an imperial seal on the door, which means that this pharmacy is answerable to no one but the queen, which is generally reserved for extremely high-ranking nobles. The second one being the presence of scary-looking guards posted outside the pharmacy that are important to protect the storefront but scare commoners away because of their chilly attitudes. What do these people want? Teletubbies to guard the store? The next problem is that they don't know what to wear inside such a fancy store, which is the most middle-class thing that I have heard in a while. The next one being that they are scared of using the wrong etiquettes in front of a noble. The next problem being that people just assume that the prices for the medicine are going to be really high, even though they are cheaper than the competition. And the final problem being that they don't trust a child owner, which is very fair to be honest. They decide to brainstorm about these problems later, and thankfully this day one customer arrives who turns out to be an old sailor, who wants some pills to reduce nausea. He gets the pills, drinks some water, and starts leaving, promising to be a returning customer, when Pharma stops him and gives him some vitamin C pills, claiming that sailors are very prone to gonorrhea, and this pill will help them defend against this problem. The old man, however, seems to be taken aback and refuses the pill, before making the excuse that someone is waiting outside for him. Pharma ends up following him and finds out that the old man is talking in a very hushed-up voice to two other suited-up men, but before he can investigate further, he is intercepted by his mom and dad, who are wearing a mask, which I have seen very often on a certain website. He takes them both inside of the shop and tells them to keep their fetishes inside of their bed chambers, but his dad simply tells him to shut up and asks him to give them the tour of the shop. Pharma takes them to the different floors of the shop, first showing the main floor area, where he is going to sell his medicine. The second area is the room for patients to rest and even has isolation cells for deranged people like me. After that, he shows them the bathroom and the kitchen before taking them to his personal lab, where he develops new methods to create crack. After the tour is over, they sit down on the couch and he explains how the customer traffic is pretty low, and the mother suggests him to start creating skincare cosmetics and sell it to the nobles and the aristocrats, which will boost his popularity amongst both nobles and the commoners. He thanks his mother because that is genuinely the best idea she has had so far, but his father becomes the buzzkill and tells him not to produce the white powder. 
Pharma seems to be confused, but his father reveals that he has noticed that women who use this white powder on their skin to make themselves look fairer end up contracting more diseases than those who don't consume this powder. Apart from that, the life expectancy also seems to get reduced if one uses this powder. He suddenly realizes that his dad is talking about the heavy metals that used to be present in the beauty products earlier, but are banned in the modern world. He promises his dad that he will make better products, but before he can talk more, a young man enters the room looking really terrified as he asks Pharma if he is the pharmacist over here as her mistress has collapsed inside of the carriage. Pharma immediately runs off behind him and reaches the carriage to find a young noblewoman looking very weak and pale. He immediately uses his pervy eye to find out what's the problem with her, only to find out that her body seems to be fine apart from some cut marks on her hand. Suddenly, he realizes that this girl must have been following the medical procedure of bloodletting, which is done to try and gain a paler and fairer look. He immediately takes her back to his pharmacy and gives her some medicine for anemia. She gains some strength and reveals that she started doing this because her crush ended up rejecting her for a fairer looking girl. What a racist bigot. After getting rejected, she followed the path of an imbecile by trying ways to get him back instead of going to the gym and becoming a mass monster. He tells her that she shouldn't be doing such things as even when performed by doctors. This is very dangerous and tells her to come back next week as he will have some new cosmetic products for her. After a week, she returns and he provides her with a new heavy metal free powder and foundation that he created, which she immediately loves. This alongside the advertisement done by Lot, ended up gaining the attention of a lot of customers who started visiting the shop to buy different products, realizing that the prices are cheap as well. After a while, the girl comes back again with a bunch of her friends, but by this time, all of the cosmetics have already been sold out, which is a big bummer. They both sit inside of a room, and she proposes to invest in his venture and open a subsidiary of his firm, which will only deal in cosmetics. He agrees to that, as his accountant gives him a green signal. After a while, another shop has been created alongside a lab, where the cosmetics are tested and created. The woman even got a bunch of trustworthy female pharmacists who specialize in cosmetics, who would be working under pharma and increasing the supply of these products. The word of this new fairness powder reached the ears of the queen as well, who calls pharma, asking about his business, and he gives her some lip gloss, which is a new thing here. She applies it on her lips, and is immediately enamored by how beautiful it makes her lips look, but pharma tells him to tread carefully, as she doesn't want to get too freaky and get some disease again. She tells him that from now on, she wants to be the first person to get these cosmetics and also tells him to increase the prices of his products, otherwise the local businessman will be crushed, which he agrees to looking forward to a new start with problems rising on the horizon. That's it for this video, make sure to like and subscribe and watch this next video on screen.